20 miles east of Syracuse, New York, lies the rural town of Fenner. Population just under 2,000. It might seem like an odd place to study alternative energy for America's future, but for the past decade, the farming community has been home to 20 wind turbines. Fenner's town supervisor, Russell Carey, is focused on progress. He notes wind turbines today are 20 times more efficient than they were 30 years ago. If we got any common sense at all, we'll keep improving on that. So if anything, if these are even close to being practical today, they're going to get better as time goes on. The United States budget calls for nearly $30 billion for energy, a 12% increase over last year, including increases for what the president calls priority areas like clean energy and research and development. So instead of subsidizing yesterday's energy, let's invest in tomorrow's. President Obama also made this clear in his 2011 State of the Union address, saying that he will continue to push investments in green energy for the environment and economic future of the U.S. So tonight I challenge you to join me in setting a new goal. By 2035, 80 percent of America's electricity will come from clean energy sources. Michael Kelleher is the Director of Renewable Energy Systems at State University of New York's College of Environmental Science so. and I mean, Forestry a lot, and but, a supporter uh, of wind energy you know, development. The wind industry in particular has been ramping up since the 1980s. It's a technology that was very expensive in 1980 and today it's about at market. Making the president's goals worthwhile in his opinion. When we build wind turbines, uh, we put people to work in the United States and as long as we want to keep owning the wind farms, uh, we keep the money in the United States versus just sending the money out of state. Back in Fenner, the local government and residents partnered with the Italian electric company Enel and their North American division in 2001. Enel made private deals with local farmers to put wind turbines on their land. Each, each wind turbine uh, at Fenner is about a megawatt and a half. So uh, 20, 20 of them would give about 30 megawatts. Um, that would probably be about 8,000 homes that it would power to put it in perspective. Fenner town leaders answer critics with a kind of welcome center, the Fenner Renewable Energy Education or Free Center for short. It provides visitors with impressive stats and facts about wind energy production. And while this is better known as the Free Center, there really isn't anything free about putting one of these babies up. Turbines this size could cost anywhere from two to four million dollars each, with some of that money possibly coming from tax dollars supporting alternative energy research and development. And that's what bothers one-time Libertarian uh, Party presidential candidate and Syracuse conservative Lawrence, radio talk show like host Gary Nolan. He argues gallon. that at this they point, wind energy is so promising, companies working with it nobody don't need federal funding. The same is true with every other form of energy. The private marketplace, somebody wants to make money. And if it's an efficient way to make money, if it actually pays for itself, they'll do it because they want the money. When the state or the federal government begin investing tax dollars or borrowing money from communist China to underwrite a, a program, uh, it's because it doesn't pay for itself, and that makes it a bad investment. This leaves even Fenner resident Donna Griffin, who donated the land for the Free Center, to question the wisdom of government funding for alternative energy businesses. They had to get right out and make it on their own, like we have had to make it on our own from day one when we tried to start our business, could they do it without, without being subsidized? But economist Pete Wilcoxon I mean, says we yet. should be offering these kinds of government subsidies, even in tough times for our national budget. Wind is rounding error in terms of thinking about the federal budget situation. Uh, you wouldn't, if I drew you a graph of the federal budget deficit, uh, now and the federal budget deficit without incentives for wind, you would not be able to tell the graphs apart, right? It's just vanishingly small. Now whether, pe people may have different opinions about whether or not we should be um, doing federally funded research on alternative energy, that's, that's highly debated, but it's not a big component of the deficit. Wilcoxon says it's spending on defense, social security and health care, causing most of the federal deficit those programs cost trillions of dollars every year.
Beyond the funding concerns, some critics of wind turbines just think they're a nuisance. Now with that, Donna Griffin disagrees. Some people might say they're noisy or the shadow effect or they just don't like to look at them. To me, those are all non-existent complaints. I mean, my dog barking is way louder than a cowbell ring or a car going by, whatever, is a lot louder. Through her deal with Annal, she receives compensation for having two turbines on her property. The little bit of land that that turbine takes up, we'd have to raise a lot of livestock on that little portion of land to make up the difference. Are we getting rich? No. She wouldn't give us an exact number, but Donna did say the deal she has with Enel brings in enough money to cover property taxes for her 420 acres. General rule of thumb, the higher the income level of the community, uh, the more resistance you're going to see to wind turbines. So if it's farmers that have been struggling because of cheap food prices in the U.S., um, they may be, view it as a good source to supplement some income and, and keep the farm alive. The wind energy Meanwhile, debate will go on as politicians fight for and against budgeting for alternative energy and as the president continues efforts to make wind and clean energy sources a permanent part of America's energy policy in an ever-changing America. We've had to plow a few roads and maintain a few roads we didn't before because now we have an industry where we didn't have it before. But overall, it's been very beneficial for the town of Fenner. And, and I think looking at the whole United States, I think it's a good example or a good direction to go.